Hi, boys and girls. It's so good to see you. Who would you like to learn about today? Let's learn about William Carey. In the book, Everyone a Child Should Know. This book is written by Claire Heath White and is illustrated by Jenny Brink. It's published by 10 Publishing. Their website is tenofthose.com. William Carey, 1761 to 1834. Have you ever been to a different country on holiday? Which country was it? How did you get there? Nowadays, it's easy to visit different countries. When William Carey was alive, it was not easy at all. There were no buses. There were no trains, cars, or airplanes. Most people only traveled a few miles in their whole lives. William was a shoemaker. He lived in a little English town. He had a wife and children. He had never traveled anywhere. But William knew that people the other side of the world needed to know about his friend, Jesus. And no one else seemed to care. So William, the shoemaker, left his little town with his wife and children and traveled to India on the other side of the world. Let me show you where India is. So this is where I am here in the United States. And India is over here. Can you find India? Right over here. Right here is India. See it? I'll zoom in. See? Now you can see India better. This is India. To tell people in India about his friend Jesus, he needed to learn their languages. So he did. He needed to put the Bible in words they understood. So he did. He needed to print new Bibles. So he did. He did whatever he could to show the people in India that they could be Jesus's friends too. It was hard. It was hard for him. It was hard for his wife and children, but he did it. Little by little, other people went to other countries to tell them about Jesus too. All because Shoemaker William did it first. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. Psalm 24, 1. Here's an image of William Carey. William Carey is considered the father of modern missions. William didn't get much of an education in school. Instead, he became an apprentice at a shoe making shop. As an apprentice, it means that he was learning about how to be a good shoemaker. While he was making shoes, 
William heard and accepted the message of the gospel. He made the decision to follow Jesus Christ. Let me tell you a little bit about what a shoemaker is, boys and girls, just in case if maybe you have never heard of a shoemaker. So a shoemaker is someone who makes designs and repairs shoes, someone who makes shoes, boys and girls. Like another name for a shoemaker is a cobbler or a cordwainer. Before the shoe manufacturing industries of today existed, long, long ago, do you know how shoes were made? Think about that. They were made one shoe at a time. <laughs> they were by hand, yes. Today in our world, they are still shoemakers, but they're very rare. The few shoemakers that exist today typically typically make good quality, well-crafted shoes. Mm -hmm. Some parts of our world still have shoemakers because some people still like to know that their perfectly fitted shoes were designed specifically for them. While William built shoes, he taught himself Greek and Hebrew. Greek and Hebrew are the languages the Bible was originally written in. William also taught himself so very many other languages. He translated the whole Bible into five languages. And parts of the Bible he translated into 29 languages. He wrote a book showing that the Bible commands Christians to go all over the world and share the gospel with others. In sermons, he urged Christians to expect great things from God, attempt great things for God. William's work inspired many missionaries to go to other places to share the gospel with people who had never heard the name of Jesus before. Boys and girls, do you expect great things from God? And do you attempt great things for him? You can expect great things from him and attempt to great things for him too. Yes, do you know why you can attempt great things for him? Because he is omnipotent. God is all powerful, boys and girls. He reigns with unlimited power. He is invincible, which means he's undefeated. So spend time in the Bible, boys and girls. Read about God's greatness and his awesome works. You can expect great things from God and attempt great things for him because with God, all things are possible. Yes, but only if the great thing we want to attempt does not go against God's will. So as long as it does not go against his word. So think about that. Is a great thing you are expecting from God in his will? Is it according to his word? Have you prayed about it? Have you sought God and his word? Have you obtained wise counsel from a pastor or a mature believer? Now those steps will help lead you to know if that great thing you are attempting for God or expecting from God is truly 
his will for you. Realize also that in that great thing you are attempting for God or expecting from him, that he is the one accomplishing that work through you. Yes, your motive for it must be to glorify him. So, I'll leave you with that thought. What great things are you expecting from God or attempting for him? See you next time.